everyone, I'm Dr. Jackie. Welcome back. I make videos about psychiatry training as well as provide commentary on how mental illness is portrayed in the media. If that's interesting to you, like and subscribe and join the team. So we did a little poll on the community tab and it seems like this is the video that you're all interested in. In my opinion, what are the wrong reasons to pursue psychiatry? I did ask some of my colleagues as they usually do because I'm curious what their wrong reasons would be and it seems like there's some overlap. So here we go. The first one would be to lock people away. I think there is a big misunderstanding with the reason behind involuntary hospitalizations. These are very much last resort. We have to prove that somebody is a danger to themselves or others. Oftentimes, people who struggle with mental illness are not a danger. It is when we're possibly off our medications or the medications need to be readjusted that it gets to such a severe state that we deem acute inpatient hospitalization as the only way to stabilize them. Hospitalizations are often only about a week or two, depending on monitoring their medications or how complicated their regimen needs to be, or whether we unfortunately have to go to court so that we could say that unfortunately the patient isn't able to make these decisions right now, but when they're on their medications, they're totally fine and able to go back into the community. When you're working with children and families, that decision definitely involves the entire family, the members of the people of the household to which that kiddo would go back to. Our job is to make sure that everyone feels safe with the plan, whatever that is. If it's discharge from the hospital, if we recommend a higher level care that is some sort of in-between outpatient and the inpatient where you stay in the hospital, everybody needs to be on board and we're not always going to feel the most comfortable with the recommendation, but we have to advocate for our patients and oftentimes it's not like we want to add somebody to the inpatient unit if we can avoid it, but sometimes that's the only thing that we can do to make sure someone is safe and back on their medications and stable. The second one is a tough one. I do not feel that somebody should pursue psychiatry if they feel like it's a means to address their own personal traumas or work through something that they're going through. That is what therapy is for. It makes a lot of sense that if we manage our own mental health, then we'll be more present and available for our patients. We'll be more effective physicians. If we use our patients to help us handle and manage something that we might be going through, then that's unfair to both you and the patient because what you really want to do is be as available to your patient as possible without your own struggles influencing your decision making. The third reason is an obvious one if you're aware that's happening but spreading your dogma or your own personal beliefs has no room in psychiatry. You're there so that the person coming into your office is able to actually be their most honest and true selves so that you can be helpful. It's obviously important that your patients come to their own realizations and their belief systems independently with your guidance, of course. However, if they know that you are trying to convince them or reason with them that your belief system is the right way, that'll impact their ability to do that. A lot of people might come into a conversation too thinking that there's a right thing to say and so if they know that that's what you think is right or what you believe to be true then they might be more willing to just go along with that just to give you the answer that they thought you were looking for or give you the answer that they think you think is right. The next two I clump together because I think they're actually really important when you're considering which specialty to go into but they can't be your only reason. Those two things are money and lifestyle. When you look at all the specialties in medicine, psychiatry generally has a pretty good lifestyle. We are not waking up with the surgeons in the early morning and we're not staying very late. There is shift work in the emergency room, so those could be long nights. However, there are many options like I've talked about before in other videos about different settings that you can work in as a psychiatrist. And in general, lifestyle could be pretty good. Money can definitely impact your decisions when it comes to deciding on a specialty. I think anybody who's doing medicine, practicing medicine these days realizes that it's not the money. It can definitely help when you're looking back at how many hours hours and years you spent figuring out your craft. However, it's the level of burnout, the lifestyle, what's best for you, and are you actually having fun doing the type of medicine that you chose to do? I think that's really important. 
money and lifestyle really go hand in hand. Obviously, it depends on your spending habits, and if your spending habits are getting increasingly larger, then your capacity to earn money in the medical specialty that you're in is going to be important to you. If you're not much of a spender and you love to save, you know that budget, then maybe that won't impact your decision when it comes to deciding on a specialty as much in terms of how much you could potentially make down the line. If you talk to any physician, I think in general you won't meet somebody that will say money is the only reason and it's enough of a reason to continue doing this work. Mental health awareness has gotten quite popular and it's gotten the attention that I think it deserves. However, if you feel like you're getting swayed by that popularity, I would sit down and make a list of all the other reasons why you would consider psychiatry, why you might not have considered it before, all of the attention that it's been getting lately. Your job as a physician, as a psychiatrist, is really going to be sticking with all your patients after the attention leaves because I anticipate that it will, that you're able to sit in the distress and discomfort of someone else's traumas or emotional burdens that aren't necessarily popular or bright and shiny. Do I hope that it continues to get enough attention that is sustained so that we can make reasonable change? Yes. Do I also know that in today's world there's a lot of attention being stretched or pulled to other really equally important things? Yes. So if you decide to choose this as a specialty, knowing that it's going to take up a lot of your time and it's a career path that you're going to be dedicated to and so you're obviously going to see it as a priority amongst many other things but that it's not going to feel so sparkly and popular forever but you still have to continue showing up for your patients and for yourself. The last reason that I think is wrong to pursue psychiatry is that you complete a training and after all your rotations you're kind of like, I don't know if I like any other types of medicine and so I will just do psychiatry. You're still prescribing medications, you are sitting down and spending a lot of time with patients, more so than I think most specialties. And so if patient care, medications, anatomy and physiology, understanding all these things and these interactions about prescribing medications, diagnosis and treatment isn't interesting to you, then really reevaluating whether this is something that you want to continue pursuing. People go into medicine for all different reasons and it's important that you go into it for your own reason. If it's for someone else's reason and you don't have any reasons, then I'm concerned that that will lead to burnout very quickly and will impact your interactions with your patients. It will also lead to a life that you feel like you didn't even choose. I didn't put this one in the poll, but I think I've done another video about why I chose psychiatry. I think I have so many other reasons where I can elaborate on some, but if that's something that you'd like to see, then just leave a comment down below and let me know. I also started posting quotes on my Instagram of my favorite books. They're going to likely be child psychiatry books because those are the books that I'm reading. If I find something that I think is psychiatric related and I wanted to share, some education for you guys, then you'll find that on my Instagram. As usual, if you have any questions for me or if you want to just send me a message over there, go say hi. You could also leave a comment down below. Thank you because we did hit 3,000 team members and so we are growing way faster than I've ever imagined. I love the community that we're building and hopefully we can continue to support each other in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next one.